सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू बाजीराव आई एस अकेडमी सो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर जो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड फ्यू क्वेश्चन फ्राम जनरल स्टडीज पेपर टू एंड इन दिस सेशन वील बी डिस्कसिंग फ्यू मोर क्वेश्चन अबाउट दिस जनरल स्टडीज पेपर टू एंड द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट दिस डिस्कशन इज विद द इंडस्ट्रियल पोल्यूशन ऑफ रिवर वाटर इज सिग्निफिकेंट एनवायरमेंटल इशू इन इंडिया and discuss the various mitigation measures to deal with this problem and also the government's initiatives in this regard so this is the question and in fact the industrial pollution of river water is a significant problem so without any doubt there are number of reasons for you know a pollution of rivers particularly because of these uh, industries because if you look at the river banks of several important rivers across different parts of india whether it is ganga and mahanadi godavari krishna kaveri so river banks of these uh, most important rivers have a lot of industries right so important industries or a lot of industries are located across these river banks and very often these industries releases the industrial effluents into the rivers but without treating the water the waste water without recycling the waste water and in fact this industrial water is a source of pollutants and nutrients and many other chemicals and that pollutes the you know river water they increase the temperatures of the water and uh, they add a lot of nutrients into the water and they also consist of a lot of harmful uh, chemicals and that would uh, you know threaten or endanger the marine organisms or change the ecosystem of that uh, you know or, or you know the existing rivers so all these are due to the industrial effluents are being released without the water the waste water is not being or properly treated now in this context we need to discuss various mitigation measures and how these mitigation measures would address this particular problem of industrial pollution into rivers and also the government initiatives which were launched uh, to mitigate the industrial pollution in india and uh, this approach of the question is very very simple and easy it's not too difficult so in the approach just describe how industrial pollution affects the river water in india so you need to write about that in the introduction and then write the mitigation measures to deal with this problem and then write government initiatives to overcome the problem of the industrial uh, pollution into the rivers so in the introduction itself what you have to do so you need to briefly define or uh, you can also write the pollution or the level of pollution within these important rivers whether ganga brahmaputra and uh, mahanadi godavari krishna and kaveri rivers and in fact industrial pollution without any doubt harms uh, the river water in india right so it harms the river water in india in several ways so including toxic chemicals heavy metals uh, eutrophication biodegradation uh, biodegradation and even untreated sewage so they are being uh, indiscriminately released particularly the untreated sewage water is indiscriminately released into the rivers so as i have already told you that the toxic chemicals and these toxic chemicals heavy metals consists of a lot of nutrients and they change the ecosystem or the nature of the uh, aquatic uh, you know ecosystem and that is a cause of concern for the aquatic organisms and in fact i hope you knew about uh, what constitutes eutrophication and eutrophication over a period of time lead to the formation of dead zones as well now eutrophication generally means that when industrial uh, you know uh, pollution is being released into the rivers so as i have already told you that the industrial pollution uh, mainly consists of the chemicals harmful chemicals as well as chemicals as well as heavy metals right so these are are uh, the pollutants industrial pollutants so both chemicals and heavy metals consists of a lot of uh, nutrients as well right so a lot of nutrients as well so because of uh, the prevalence of nutrients in the uh, uh, water which is being released from the industries there will be a lot of growth in algal blooms right 
so lot of growth in algal uh, blooms and in fact when these algal blooms are growing so they use a lot of oxygen which is prevalent in the river water and that makes the existing oxygen insufficient for other aquatic er uh, organisms so therefore it increases the biological oxygen demand algal blooms increases the biological oxygen demand and thereby reducing oxygen so which is required by the other aquatic organisms and over a period of time the rivers uh, would uh, you know develop into a eutrophicated rivers or river eutrophication would generally takes place eutrophication of rivers would takes place so this is very important concept you need to understand what is biological oxygen demand and uh, what is eutrophication and how these algal blooms grow so because when the water which is being released into the rivers without uh, the treatment so this water has a lot of nutrients and this nutrients have algal uh, you know uh, uh, this nutrients facilitate the growth of algal blooms and algal blooms reduces the level of oxygen in the water because they consume a lot of oxygen which is uh, present in the water but other aquatic organisms uh, also require uh, oxygen so thereby uh, reducing the level of oxygen in the water and over a period of time because of uh, uncontrolled growth of these algal blooms leads to the eutrophication and even uh, biodegradation of the existing algal blooms would also consume a lot of oxygen so all these factors are because of the toxic chemicals heavy metals which are being released from this industrial uh, pollution or water so it adversely affects the water quality and that causes existential problem for aquatic life health risk for those living near the rivers and for example uh, there are a lot of industrial cities uh, like Allahabad, Kanpur, Kanpur, Varanasi so most of these cities across river banks of river Ganga and they contain a lot of factories so right so all of these uh, rivers have contained river banks have contained many industries so these industries including chemical plants tanneries distilleries hospitals and slaughterhouses so all these uh, different hospitals are located across uh, sorry uh, different industries are located across the river banks so there are a certain mitigation measures uh, these mitigation measures will help deal with this problem in a very effective manner right so so one thing that we need to understand is that you know because of the toxic chemicals toxic chemicals and heavy metals heavy metals released into the water so it results in eutrophication eutrophication of river water because of excess growth of algal blooms and it would also result in biomagnification as well so i hope you knew about this biomagnification and it would also results in bioaccumulation as well biomagnification and bioaccumulation as well so uh, these would be the consequences of the industrial pollutants which are being released into the water so biomagnification bioaccumulation now the problems are that uh, it actually change the aquatic ecosystem right so aquatic ecosystem would be changed right so it would lead to the loss of biodiversity as well so we can say that this is biodiversity loss that would be another and water will not be portable or it would also results in uh, drinking water shortages or water crisis drinking water crisis as well right so uh, health problems as well Right, so these are all the consequences of rivers are being polluted and river water also uh, may not be used for the agriculture when it is heavily polluted so these are the all consequences and because of that reason there is a need to undertake certain mitigation measures and these mitigation measures would address the problem so what measures uh, what mitigation measures have to be undertaken to address the problem of uh, uh, these industrial pollution so first and foremost there is a need to bring in green Green chemistry okay so green chemistry has a lot of potential to reduce the industrial pollution so green chemistry essentially means that 
the design of the chemical products and the processes which are used and followed in these respective industries so that would reduce or even eliminate the use of or generation of hazardous substances so for example there are certain hazardous substances which are being released through you know uh, industrial effluents into the rivers so however green chemistry eliminates uh, the releasing of these harmful substances into the river so therefore green chemistry has to be brought in and it has to be followed in these industrial designs and processes so but applying these principles of green chemistry using renewable resources and minimizing waste and avoiding toxic chemicals industries can effectively reduce their environmental impact and they can also substantially or significantly save a lot of money as well and in fact so those industries also enjoy a lot of trust and goodwill from the people as well for example some industries as of now switched using biodegradable or recyclable materials such as plant based plastic instead of petroleum based ones so we all knew that petroleum based plastics are harmful to the environment and also human health uh, so because petroleum is a fossil fuel and apart from that petroleum based plastics or uh, any other items are not non biodegradable so when they are non biodegradable so it causes a lot of harm to the environment right so apart from that they should be water treatment systems so you may have come across words such as uh, sewage treatment plants and all these industries should have the recycling facilities the government should also incentivize the industries which have already installed the sewage water treatment plants or recycling facilities in those industries because that would encourage other industries follow the uh, you know industries which have already established the recycling facilities so water treatment systems are essential or important for removing pollutants from the industrial waste water before discharging it into the environment environment so there are different types a lot of types of water uh, water treatment systems such as so physical water treatment systems chemical biological and membrane processes so all these processes can effectively uh, remove the solids organic matter nutrients metals and pathogens from the wastewater and that has to be followed in a an effective manner and in fact a lot of water conservation practices are actions so these water conservation practices can also effectively reduce the amount of water used by the industries so industries should uh, you know uh, adopt the water efficient techniques the water efficiency methods so that they can use a minimal amount of water and they can also release a very minimal amount of water into the rivers so when a minimal amount of water is being released into the rivers so it also enhances the capacity of the industries to treat the uh, you know almost all amount of the water that is being released by those industries so therefore the water efficiency techniques or the methods have to be adopted in all these industries so by adopting the water conservation practices industries can not only save water and money so they can not only save water and money but they can also effectively reduce volume and even concentration of pollutants in the wastewater so that is a very very important aspect here because that would substantially or significantly reduces the pollution of river waters and apart from that we need to install the water efficient devices so water efficient devices including low flow uh, faucets and shower heads repairing leaks recycling water using alternative water sources such as rain water and even the grey water aspects as well right so that is a very very important thing here and in fact the environmental audits are uh, they have to be regularly conducted because you know uh, environmental audit ensures that uh, you know how uh, effectively these industries or industrial effluents are polluting the rivers and they are disturbing the existing river water ecosystem so environmental audits are systematic and assessments of the environmental performance and compliance of an industry by conducting environmental audits now industries can effectively identify the sources and also impacts of water pollution and they can also evaluate the effectiveness of their water management practices 
practices and find opportunities for the improvement as well so there are a lot of government initiatives that are being undertaken in this regard so when we look into these government initiatives to overcome the issue of industrial effluents polluting the river waters so particularly the namami gange program so we all knew that this namami gange program was launched in the year 2014 so this namami gange program is a flagship program and this program has allocated over 20000 crore to the clean ganga right so because uh, if you look at all the rivers in india river ganga is one of the most polluted river right so it is not just a most polluted river in india but in the entire world it is one of the most polluted river there are multiple reasons for river ganga uh, being polluted right so uh, in order to rejuvenate river ganga in order to make this particular river which has a lot of economic cultural importance pollution free the government has specifically launched a program called namami gange program in the year 2014 and has also allocated around 20000 crore rupees to clean river ganga to rejuvenate and revive river ganga and make it pollution free so under this namami gange program so 11 common effluent treatment plants were installed right so effluent treatment plants were the plants which were established at the river banks so that these effluent treatment plants can treat the water which is being released from the industries or even the urban municipal waste water would also be treated properly recycled properly and the recycled water then would be released into the river right so across the major industrial zones 11 common effluent treatment plants were established along the river ganga now as of 2023 industrial discharge into ganga has reduced by 70 percentage according to the national mission for clean ganga and central pollution control board through its real time monitoring systems right so because you know the overall objective of the namami gange program is to revive uh, river ganga but central pollution control board also regularly monitors the level of pollution or the level of pollutants across different rivers so central pollution control board through its real time monitoring systems also it it also has the real time monitoring system so it it tracks the industrial effluents from 3000 major industries and their efforts combined with the continuous emission monitoring system have increased compliance by 30% since 2020 and in fact so it was initiated uh, in 1976 so the gap uh, is a you know a precursor to the namami gange program so gap here means the ganga action plan right so gap means ganga action plan so it was initiated in 1986 and it is the precursor to the namami gange program so so, so despite uh, the existing limitations of uh, this particular program so it has laid a strong foundation for uh, river cleaning projects in india particularly river ganga so under ganga action plan 2 pollution from the industries which are located along the river banks of river ganga was decreased by 20 to 25% though the need for further improvement led to a newer initiatives such as namami gange program so, so remember that the ganga action plan was the predecessor of the namami gange program so after ganga action plan namami gange program was actually launched so addressing the industrial pollution of river water it requires a holistic approach so, so there is a need of a holistic approach so thereby combining strict enforcement with technology incentives for the industries and there is a need for collaborative action between industries government local communities so they will be key to achieving cleaner rivers and more sustainable future as well so that's how you can write the conclusion for this particular question so i hope you have understood the measures that the government has undertaken or the mitigation efforts that have to be undertaken to recycle the water or recycle the effluents which are being discharged by the industries into the rivers so etc so you can add more and more points make sure that these points are relevant to the demand of the question 
right so next question was uh, what role do environmental ngos can play right so we have a lot of uh, you know non governmental organizations and in fact these non governmental organizations have been working in the area of environment or environmental conservation right so environment conservation so in this context the question is what role do environmental non governmental organizations and activists play in impacting the environmental impact assessment so i'll be explaining you about environmental impact assessment or what exactly is environmental impact assessment and even outcomes for major projects in india so you need to provide some examples as well so along with this particular answer so first and foremost we'll try to understand what is environmental impact assessment then we'll try to link everything with it right so you know every country's core objective particularly with respect to environment and development is balancing development balancing development with environmental sustainability balancing development with environmental sustainability is the core objective right so it is the core objective of balancing uh, development with environmental sustainability is the core objective of every country's uh, economic growth or economic development so they must uh, keep in mind the environmental sustainability as well so uh, you know uh, as an example so imagine that there is a kajiranga national park so kajiranga national park so which is located in uh the state of assam right so kajiranga national park so kajiranga national park uh, without any doubt it is a sensitive uh, you know a sensitive ecosystem sensitive ecosystem and there should be a minimal disturbance to the uh, you know uh, the uh, life which is existing in the kajiranga national park right because of its sensitive nature so but even though it is sensitive in nature but there are certain developmental inter, uh, imperatives remember tomorrow there is a need to uh, lay a highway in the middle of the kajiranga national park right so there is a need to lay down a road Uh, a highway in the middle of kajiranga national park because that would substantially reduces the uh, you know time to travel to from one different region to another region and it also reduces both time and distance so however if we construct a road in the middle of kajiranga national park so without a doubt so that disturbs and even destroys the ecosystem which is present in the kajiranga national park but development is very very important infrastructure is very important for any country because without infrastructure real growth and development can never be achieved so here a uh, one concept called environmental impact assessment comes into the picture Now, what is environmental impact assessment, particularly with respect to this example? Now, here environmental impact assessment is that, okay, you can construct a highway in the middle of Kajiranga National Park. So, no problem. You can construct a highway in the middle of the Kajiranga National Park, but you construct this highway in such a manner that this highway. should reduce its worst environmental impact so or it has a least environmental impact so even if you construct a highway in the middle of kajiranga national park it should have the least impact on the sensitive nature of the ecosystem which is present in the kajiranga national park so there should be a minimal disturbance and even if you construct the road the ecosystem which is present in kajiranga national park should withstand itself should be resilient so that is environmental impact assessment right so a proper environmental impact assessment of every project is being done so that these projects or uh, the environmental footprint of these projects can be minimized substantially so that makes these projects sustainable and they are also in line with the 
objective of every country that is balancing growth and development with the environmental sustainability so however what role environmental non-governmental organizations so non-governmental organizations are a certain uh, structures uh, with the you know like-minded people or like-minded organization they come together they fight against the common problems that the people have been facing or the community has been facing and in fact they are like a, a you know uh, representatives for the people and uh, the government in between the government and the people so they're like a representatives and uh, they very often uh, communicate the government the problems that the people or the community has been facing now in this context what role the environmental ngos and activists play in influencing the environmental impact assessment outcomes for major projects in india and you should also cite some examples with all important details so firstly you can write an approach for this question so define what is environmental impact assessment in the introduction and then you need to discuss how environmental impact assessment actually helps in environmental sustainability of projects which are being undertaken minimizing the ecological damages and the right the role of environmental ngos and activists uh, in influencing environmental impact assessment discuss with some relevant examples also and conclude the answer with appropriate suggestions on better implementation of this environmental impact assessment firstly in the introduction itself you need to define what is environmental impact assessment so environmental impact assessment or eia is the process through which an environmental impact of a proposed development is evaluated right so environmental impact of a particular project is being evaluated the environmental impact the worst impact on the environment by uh, you know undertaking a particular project would be minimized through the environmental impact assessment and in fact the environmental impact assessment is a comprehensive and a holistic process because it takes into consideration the socio-economic cultural and human health impacts so all these things and in the next part of the answer you need to write how environmental impact assessment actually helps in environmental sustainability of projects by minimizing the ecological damage right so how it would minimizes the ecological damages uh, by you know how this environmental impact assessment helps in ensuring environmental sustainability of uh, these projects and also minimizes the ecological damage so environmental impact assessment assesses potential risks or to the environment because of undertaking a certain project and it also predicts the impacts on the environment in the early stage or in the planning process of a particular project so that we can get an overall understanding an overall idea about the impact that one particular project is going to have on the environment or ecosystem and in fact the environmental impact assessment also suggests ways to minimize the harm to the environment so how we can minimize harm to the environment and that is also an, uh, important when it comes to the environmental impact assessment so these harms to the environment can be minimized by adapting certain mitigation strategies and even so these mitigation strategies would be followed into the developmental plan and environmental impact assessments would also allow the affected communities or the stakeholders to contribute to the decision making process so they can also be part of the decision making process because uh, you know so there are certain sections of the certain communities who may be uh, displaced because of undertaking a project remember the tribals uh, who have the traditional rights over the land the forest lands uh, because of construction of a project they may lose uh, their traditional rights they may be displaced so in this context the affected communities and stakeholders would also be involved in the environmental impact assessment project when it comes to the decision making so thereby a comprehensive and even environmentally sustainable decision can be arrived and it also substantially increases the public trust and accountability as well so the environmental impact assessment also assesses viable alternatives for the development project such as com so combinations that use natural resources more efficiently and effectively 
now in fact the environmental impact assessments also help avoid costly and even environmentally damaging modifications that might be required later in the project life cycle right so what role uh, environmental ngos and activists have in influencing the environmental impact assessment outcomes so what role they can uh, generally play in this context so the environmental ngos and activists in india so they play a very important and a very significant role in advocating for the protection of the environment because their key concern was uh, the protection of environment ensuring environmental sustainability ensuring people are not displaced even people are displaced from uh, their traditional habitats so a proper rehabilitation measures have to be provided for the people right so they also raise awareness about the ecological impact of the major projects often informing the public and government about potential harm caused by major industrial and infrastructure projects and after this environmental impact assessment so ngos also play a crucial role a, a very important role when it comes to monitoring the implementation of the environmental safeguards promised during the assessment phase so they also report the deviations to ensure compliance with the environmental standards as well right so these are the important functions that are being performed by the environmental ngos and activists as well so when we talk about some relevant examples for this so narmada bachavo andolan so we very well knew about this narmada bachavo andolan specifically about constructing uh, the uh, barrage across the narmada river so this narmada bachavo andolan's activism led to a fresh environmental environmental impact assessment that was conducted for the sardar sarovar dam focusing on the displacement issues of the people and even there was a save western ghats movement because uh, ngos which are being influenced by the kasturi rangan uh, uh, committee report on the western ghats so influenced by this kasturi rangan committee because kasturi rangan committee has also emphasized on uh, you know uh, declaring western ghats most of the western ghats area as uh, the environmentally sensitive uh, area so ecologically sensitive area so influenced by the uh, ngos report so most ngos have advocated restricting industrial projects in these eco sensitive zones as per the kasturi rangan panel report and in fact uh, there was uh, a vedanta mining project in niyamgiri hills of the eastern ghats right so uh, you know the present day odisha where uh, you know niyamgiri hills are part of the eastern ghats so a vedanta mining project so activists which are being supported by ngos like survival international so they fought the vedanta bauxite mining project in odisha and in fact the project was on the sacred land of dongaria kond tribal group and in fact they threatened their way of life and also local ecosystem so there were a lot of movements against the bauxite mining which is which is carried out by the vedanta mining project so therefore in this context there is a need to strengthen legal and institutional framework for the you know uh, for conducting a comprehensive environmental impact assessment so thereby ensuring a clear and comprehensive guidelines effective enforcement robust grievance redressal mechanisms are the need of the hour when it comes to the environmental impact assessment so in this context there is a need to enhance public participation and there is also a need to ensure that people have access to information including ngos and activists and there is also need to pro improve transparency in the environmental impact assessment process in the government projects or even the private projects as well so thereby the all the stakeholders can effectively take part in the environmental uh, impact assessment and they can also take an appropriate decision so thereby incorporating a more meaningful engagement with local communities and other stakeholders holders so that's how you can conclude this particular answer right so that's all in this lecture and thank you so much so if you like our please subscribe our youtube channel and also hit the like button thank you